correct. So, uh, once again, thank you very much for coming. This is the last installment of this class. And for the past four times I've done so, I'll do it one more time. The, according to Orthodox theology, we believe that the Torah, the both oral and written tradition, came from God. At uh, trans- God said it to Moses at Mount Sinai, and he would then write it down over the next 40 years while, while they were in the desert. Everything that we have is coming from that source. In other words, we're not making anything up on our own. We didn't just see something and say, wow, this sounds like a great idea. This is actually coming from God and God's telling us what to do. With that understanding, we now are going to learn about sexuality. What is the Jewish view of sexuality? And since it's a really cold day, why not pick the hot topic that we have for tonight? Okay. So now... Uh, if you open, like I said, if you go to the Chumash, to the Bible, it goes to page 9. We're in, very, we're in the very beginning of Genesis. And God has created a lot of things, but when it comes to man, it comes. It, we have a whole new <coughs> set of rules. Everything else God created by saying, let there be, let there be, let there be, and there was. Okay? Uh, for instance, in the first day it says... In the uh, beginning, God created the heavens and earth. You don't, is, you don't have to go back to page two for this. The land was, uh, the, the land was, uh, tovo. it was uh, astonishingly empty, darkness on the face of the earth. So what does God say? Let there be light, and there was light. Simple as that. The next day, God says again, let there be a firmament. There was a firmament, and so on and so forth. Somebody suddenly on page eight, it says, Vayomer Elohim. God said, now this name of God is a God of judgment. What we like, the attribute of judgment. Okay? So, the God of, if you will, judgment says, Naase Adam. Let us make man. Who is God speaking with? Let us. Go ahead. The Hashem, the other, not the non-God judgment, or, or the God who doesn't judge, or no, no, no. Oh, good, good, good try, but no, <laughs> no. Okay. So he's talking to the angels. Now he said, "Is there either one of the? What about the the, uh, the use of the royal we?" It could be the, It could be that certainly. It could be let us, meaning the royal we. No problem. It could be that. But the rabbis tell us. <coughs> that God was teaching us uh, humility. There's one thing that you have to remember, uh, we have to remember when we're learning Torah, that when Hashem wrote down, or told Moses what to write down, he had a reason for everything. It wasn't just to tell us history. It was very nice to know, learn history, but anybody who looks to the Torah to learn history is barking up the uh, bark up the wrong tree? That's the expression. Yeah. Barking up the wrong tree because it does not go chronologically. Sometimes it's out of order. Sometimes it's all famished, as you would say in Yiddish. It's all mixed up. So it's not the place to go for history, but it's the place to, for instruction. Which is then, uh, if you look at the word Torah, really the sh- the shoresh, the root of that is yud rejei, which means shooting an arrow or instruction. It's really a book of instruction. So we're learning from what God does or what God tells Moses to write down. We're learning how to act. We want to emulate God. So God gives us this introduction. He says, Nasa Adam. And what it means is he talked to the angels. And he said to the angels, he said, look, I'd like to make man. And I want to make them in, in this form. The angels say to God, not a good idea. It's not going to work out too well for you, God. And he, they have the whole discussion there. And really, God says to the angels in the end, thank you very much for your input. And he makes man. Even though they were dead set against it, God was just showing humility. Just like we, when I, we talk to our children, and we say to them, would you like to share that with me? Now, sometimes people say, the kids will say no, and we try to cajole them into it. And but if they say no, ultimately we say, "I know my mother said to me, fine, you don't want to share with me. I'll remember that." 
<laughs> and then she wants to teach me a lesson because then when she was having something that I wanted, I said, Ma, can I have some, please? She said, no. I was dumbfounded. What do you mean, no? My mother doesn't know me. And she said, well, I, when I asked you to share, you said, no. That was yours. It was your right. So here, if I have it, it's my right too to say no. If you share with me, I'll share with you. So the same thing. God is basically saying to the angels, I hear your argument as to why I should not make men, but in the end, I'm going to make men. And not only that, but I'm going to make them in our image. In our image, in our form. And what does that mean? There's a lot of terms that are strange. So what does it mean in our image? So it's, the rabbis explain in a form, God made us uh, from a mold. Again, unlike everything else, a mold, like you would make bread in a mold. Okay. So unlike everything else where it's let there be, and it happens, God's creating something very special when it comes to man. We have a specific mold that we're being made out of. And also, what in our form, what does that mean? Rashi explains, Rashi is the main commenter, as I said many times, on the Torah, and he says it's to understand and to become enlightened. That's what our form is, to, un to have a cause of, un to, to have an understanding of what's going on in the world, and to cause, to be caused to be enlightened. To notice, I, I can, I'm like an animal which is doing things by um, instinct. instinct. I'm doing things, we all do things through thought. There's nothing, not you can watch the videos on YouTube and you can see a lot of people who do stupid things and you think, how, how did they get there? I personally think they're high when they do a lot of their dumb things. But even there, there is some thought because they think they're going to get away with it. Like these guys who I saw a video on YouTube, on Facebook today, real smart people. They filmed themselves robbing the store and put it on YouTube. And the only thing that you can be happy about is, Baruch Hashem, they indicted themselves that much that the cops really have no problem having the evidence to put these guys away already. But you're thinking, what kind of idiots are you? But again, there was forethought, they thought they were being cool. So we have the ability to be, do stupid things, or to use our abilities that God gave us to be very good. Okay, so that's what it means, bitsalmenu, and with our form, a special form, mold, if you will, that he made, kidmutenu, with the ability to have intellectual thought. Now, what are we supposed to do? The verse continues, vayirdu bidigata yam, and they will rule over the fish of the sea, uva of hashemayim, and of the birds of the sky, uba behema, and of the animals, domesticated animals, uva cholarts, and all of the land. Our job, God is creating us to rule the world, run the world. Okay. So not only that, but all all the creepy crawlies over the uh, that crawl in the uh, the world. So God's setting up an interesting situation here. We're supposed to rule over man. We're supposed to uh, over I'm sorry over the creatures. We become this war and the wardens, if you will, of the world. We have to make sure everything is in order. Now we can do a good job with that, or we can do a horrible job with that. We can think, since it says, you're the ones who rule over it, we have the choice, right? I can either destroy species left and right, go hunting, kill the whales, do whatever you want to do, because it says rule over it, or I can be a good uh, leader of the world and not, uh, well, they, they have hunting season where they have limits on what you can hunt. What do they call that? Uh, besides... Was it? Hunting seasons. No, I'm saying but the limits. Yeah, quarters. Quarters. <laughs> quarters. When they put quarters on, why are they putting quarters on? Because they say, if we don't, this is what I was told in school, I don't know if it's really true, but this is what they told me in, in public school. But they said, if they didn't have those quarters, so then the animals would populate too much, and they would end up starving by themselves. So we're really being very nice to kill them. Yeah. That's how they rationalize hunting. Now, I don't hunt, I never did hunt, but yeah. Benevolent and malevolent. Yeah, okay. Both yeah, yeah. Like supreme rulers, but one's... Good enough. Okay, so now it continues. 
And the next verse says, Vayivra Elohim et ha'adam. Now this is a strange language. It says, God, again, the God of uh, justice, created the man. Not man. Who? The man. What The question is, what is what does it mean, the man? Does it mean an individual person? Or does it mean mankind? It's an interesting thing that one rabbi brings up. Really, what's going on there? Because if it would just want to say, the argument is, if it would just want to say God created man or Adam, it would have said, Vayevra Elohim, Adam! Not, he, he created Adam, not the Adam. You don't say he created the Johnny. You don't do that. You just say Adam. They didn't, they didn't translate it correctly. No, they, as a matter of fact, they translated it so God created man. Right. Right. But he's pointing out a, a true point. That is, God created the adult man. But Salmo in his image, but Salmo Elohim Barah Oto, in the image of God, the God of justice, he created him. Now, here's something interesting. Zacha Unakeva Bara Otam. Male and female, he created them. So make up your mind. Is it one creation? Or is it two creations? Is it Adam as in mankind? So he made a man and a woman? Or multiple uh, multiple men and women? Whatever you want to say. But certainly it's called simple shot. Simple understanding of the text. One man, one woman. Did he do that? <coughs> Or did he make a being that is both male and female? <coughs> you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's going to start it by the verse. No tricks here. Just by the verse. And that's how you have to learn the Torah. God wants us to learn that way. So according to uh, there's this, there's, uh, the Talmud says that God, the first man, the first being <coughs> that God created, man, was uh, they call it hermaphrodite both male and female right okay mm -hmm. so hermaphrodite and then when god the sex of it will split us up so that's the old story of he we have to find our other half that's where that comes from that saying i have to find my other half is coming from the bible where it says they were hermaphrodite god created that and then split us off and now we find we try to find our mate i gotta find my other rib Sorry? i got to find my other ribs. There you go. Yeah. If you, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about ribs in a few minutes. <laughs> now, this, uh, the next verse. Vayavanech otam elokim. So Hashem blessed them. Again, now it seems like this too here. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful. What's ha'adam? It goes back to that question. What's adam? Is it mankind? Which it sort of sounds like. Because he's, he's blessing them. It's not one anymore. If I would say he blessed one, he still says Ha'adam. Right, but Ha'adam would mean the man or, or that species, mankind. Ah. Okay, that's what that's the point. It would mean the uh, uh, that group, and the problem is because it says he blessed them. You have to be very careful. By the way, when it's saying man and him and so on and so forth, the reason it does that is in Hebrew, if uh, like most languages. If I have a mixture of men and women together, then it always goes after the male uh, language. So it's not that God created him, and it means him uh, the male. It could be everybody. In other words, if I would have 30 women in this room, and one man, when, I'm using the, when I want to say they, I would use the masculine form of that. So by, when we hear, when you see it in the English, him, it, but it should really mean it. <coughs> That's how we translate in English. We go, we'll go for it. But staying with this. So, so Hashem blessed them. And he says to them, again, this is all plural. So Hashem said to them, be fruitful and multiply, which tells us that we can't, we, that we're commanded to have more than one child. And we sh uh, the Jewish law says that if a, obviously I have to be capable, my wife has to be capable of bearing children, but as soon as she is, so we have to have a boy if we want to fulfill the, uh, mitz the mitzvah, the commandment properly, and God allows us to do it. Again, it's all in God's hands at this point. Minimally. 
minimal, uh, sorry? You can say if we want to do it. Right, so then we have to have a boy and a girl. If you don't have a boy and a girl, let's say you have five boys, but you don't have a girl, the next generation, okay. without girls, you can't do anything. Without boys, you can't do anything. So we want to build a, build a world up, so we have to have a boy and a girl. That's why many families will not stop at two, but they'll have multiple children, and uh, again, whatever God gives us is what we get because we can't decide what we want and we can't say, no thanks, didn't want that. You can't send it back to, you know, return to sender. It doesn't work like that. But we have a mitzvah. It's a, it's a commandment to have children. And what happens with those children and us? The reason we have to have children is because we have to populate this world. And by the way, for those who are so worried about overpopulation, my wife, uh, I believe was, uh, she heard or saw on the internet or on the radio, whatever it was, that today's present population, we could, world population, we could fit into Texas. If you build a couple of high top, what? Five foot by five foot space. Five foot by five foot. Five foot by five foot. Yeah. They said like towers or something, like in New York. No, no elbow room. Yeah. Elbow room? Everybody can stand there. Five okay, five. fine. Can you imagine that? The rural population in Texas, and we're worried about overpopulation. It's a joke. Yeah. It's a total joke. So, but that God created us to fill the world because He wants the world filled, right? And the Chivshua, what do we do when we fill the world? We have to conquer it. So, first, we were ruling over all the animals. Now we're told to conquer the, the world. Urdu, and again, Urdu, Begah, Yam, and again, rule over the fish of the sea, over all Fashmaim, the birds of the heaven, the Chol Chai HaRamesed, Allah Hars, and all the animals that are crawling on the world. And so that's really our mission. Let's understand that. That's our mission. We have to have children, we have to rule over the world, and Hashem created us like that. Okay? It goes on and on and tells us what to do. Very nice. I don't want, and then find the last verse, Vayal Lukem Ekola Shirasa, Hashem saw all that he did in 31. Vayit Vihine Tov Ma'od, and behold, it was very good, and it was evening, it was morning, the sixth, uh, the sixth day. When God said it was very good, or it is good, what, what, the, what it means is that that creation, or whatever Hashem made, is going to last. It's not going to end. It's, it's will always be there. That's what it means. It was very good. He created everything the way it has to be in the final form, if you will. Okay? Yeah. By conquering the land, you mean crops? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Conquering the land means to, uh, to worry about what's going to happen. You know, today we have fracking. Fracking is... Uh, uh, there are uh, natural natural gas and so forth. There are good parts to that. There are bad parts to that. The bad, the good parts is we get all the natural gas and we get our oil and so on and so forth. The bad parts, according to geologists and all the other people who are yelling on Yahoo.com, go to that for a, that's my source of the news. They uh, they're claiming that it can cause earthquakes and it can cause a lot of problems. So. Again, we have our job is to take care of the world, not to destroy it. The one thing we can be happy about, though, is it says in Psalms that this world will always be here and that we can't destroy it. God will stop us from that. He'll destroy it. We'll be gone before the world is destroyed. So I'm really not worried about the world falling apart. What I am worried about is our breathable ear going away. I'm worried about that. That I would be worried about. We can kill ourselves off. But because uh, that we have free will to do. Unlike every other animal out there who does not kill itself, doesn't think, gee, I'm going to kill myself now and do it. We actually do. <coughs> There's, uh, again, a child who was, what, what was her hit? Uh, I think it was a girl who did it. I forget. It was a boy or a girl. But she, it was a... Uh, she claimed to be a, a, a transgender, whatever, GLBT or whatever, uh, transgender. transgender, okay. And she said her parting thing, she walked in front of a truck, <coughs> and she, her parting thing was, I want my death to mean something. Oh. She was looking for meaning. I don't know if that's the way to get it, but she'll never know either. 
uh, she or he, I forget which one, which was the natural sex that the person was. But the, uh, that's what people want. That's, since they can choose to do that. When we smoke cigarettes, and we know that is dangerous to our health, we are choosing to potentially kill ourselves. If we have all these sugars, raise our triglyceride levels, uh, eat too much, even though it tastes great, the cookies and everything else, yeah. still, we're choosing to put ourselves into danger. So that, but an animal doesn't do that. An animal only eats what they're going to eat, and then it goes away. And if you want proof of that, just look at dogs. After a while, they don't eat. Cats are the worst. You put, put food in front of a cat that they don't like, they look at you like, mm, who are you, you know? The dogs will at least eat, the, the cats don't like to them. But that's what I'm saying, they don't eat more. Kids, naturally, will not eat more. Naturally. But we we train them. Social eating. But otherwise, natural, they'll stop. Not yeah. If you keep putting sugar in front of them. <laughs> Even they they stop. We, uh, kids will stop after all. But, okay, I don't want to get into that. That's number one. So now, uh, with, that, with that part of the story, we see that we have a relationship. God gave us a relationship. And he said, your relationship is to conquer the land and to take care of it. We have the choice to destroy it. We have the choice to ravage our forests and so on and so forth. Or we have the choice to actually recycle like everybody's forcing us to do these days. Anyway, so now I want you to go to that story one, if you will. Now we go to chapter two. And it's on page... Uh, it's on page 10, right? Good. So now, I want you to understand something, please. In the first chapter, what God did was he gave us an overview of creation. Comes to this chapter, God's going to make it seem as if there's a rewrite. But really, it's not a rewrite. Really, it's filling in the holes. That's why I'm saying the Torah doesn't work in chronological order. It works in, I want to give you the overview, and then I want to get specific. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here. In chapter 2, it says, and we'll just, uh, if you start at, well, we'll start at verse 4. It says, these are the generations, Ela told of Shemaimba Arts, these are the generations of the heaven and the earth, Behi Baram, when he created them. Biyom asol Hashem Elokim. Suddenly Hashem, by the way, has two names. Hashem Elokim. Hashem is what we call in English the Tetragrammaton, which is a four-letter name, which is where the, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses jump out with Jehovah, Yahweh, all these different names. So they get totally wrong. It's totally wrong. What they're doing is they're using the vowels that, the, that are in the Masoretic text, and the vowels in the Masoretic text make you read that word as Adonai, Master. But what they did was, they thought, that's how you read the, it was, they didn't realize it. They thought that's how you read it, so that's how you got Yehovah, Jehovah, or Yahweh, or whatever they want to say. All of these yeah. things are false, it's foolishness, and it's 100% wrong. And anybody who says that they're right, they should have their head examined. It's, I mean, that's strong about it. Okay, but what it means, the two names of God are Yah, Hashem, again, the Yudkei Bavke, the, the Tetragrammaton, that's referring to the God, uh, the attribute of mercy. Okay, and combined with Elohim, as I said, the attribute of justice. So what's going on here? Right away, you have to ask a question. Wait a second. In the whole first chapter... Is it justice or judgment? Justice, judgment, same. same. Either, yeah. Uh, in the whole first chapter, saying, Elohim, 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 judgment, judgment, judgment. So in the second chapter, it gives God a new name. So what's going on? So what happened is, originally, the original plan, if you will, of creation, God is telling us, is that I wanted everything to be done... Injustice. What's justice? Black and white. No gray. If you want to see black and white, by the way, you go to kids. 
kids in the school or young kids, they only know black and white. There's no gray to children. It's only when we get to be older that we suddenly create the gray matter. But kids, for the most part, you, if, they, if you ask them, is it good or no good, they will make that decision and punish accordingly. For we, we, we say, oh, we have to understand there's something else going on. That's the gray. So when it came to God, he's telling us, if you want creation to work, it doesn't just work with justice. You have to have the mercy. Mercy with justice. I have to temper the justice with mercy. That's why he says, Hashem Elohim in the second part. And watch how it continues. So Hashem Elohim, again, this combination is making the heaven near earth. V'chol siyech ha-sadeh, terem yiyeh ba'aretz. And all the, the, the uh, plants, if you will, the trees of the field, were not yet on the land. V'chol esev ha-sadeh, and all the grass of the field, terem yismach, they had not yet grown. Why? Ki lo him tir Hashem Elohim al Because Hashem, the God, uh, again, this, uh, this mixture of uh, mercy and judgment did not cause it to rain on the earth for a very simple reason. Adam, I and the avodah There was no man, there was no person, in other words, to work the ground. Again, what's the whole purpose for creation? To work. God doesn't want to have to do everything, if you will. Okay, using that sort of thing. He doesn't want to do it. He wants to split the work up. He has workers here. So uh, once I, if there's nobody there, I'm not going to cause it to rain because then, uh, two reasons. One, there'll be nobody to work and they'll all go wild. God doesn't want that. There's going to be no order. But the second reason, and one of the most important reasons, if it would have rained before man saw it raining, so man would not real, and things grew, Men would not realize how important rain is, and they wouldn't pray for it. God wants to explain to us, you're still relying upon me. Okay, that's an important part of this. You're relying upon me. So now what happens? And so, Eid Yalem and Ars, the uh, mist goes up from the land. V'hishkai kol adama. And it was a whole face of land. V'yitzer ha'ashem elukem and adam. Oh, uh, suddenly we have a new thing. Originally, it said God created the man. Now it says God formed the man. Afar min ha'adama, dust from the uh, from the ground. Vayipach ba'apav nishmat chaim, and he blew into his nose the breath of life. Vayadam nefesh chaya, and suddenly man was a living thing. Unlike in the first story. The first part, if you will, where God is giving the overview, I made man, so on and so forth. Here we're getting to the specifics of what God is doing. God in his mercy is creating us. He's telling us what elements we come from. He's even telling us that he gave us mouth to mouth, if you will. He gave us, uh, he breathed the life, which means, by the way, we're not just like the animals. We're separate. The animals were just created. God didn't breathe the life into them. He created us, and we're a combination of the heaven, the, of the spiritual, and the uh, carnal. 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 carnal, fine, the material, the, the, the material, and the spiritual. So that's who we are, and so God is, and we have to uh, balance that. By the way, it's a very hard balance. In other words, if I'm an animal, I just go by instinct. If I'm a spiritual being, so then I'm going. By uh, by what God only wants. Once I mix that, wow! Talk about the fight you're going to have. I want my carnal desires, and but God saying no, and I'm having that tremendous fight. What do I do? One part of me wants to go one way, the other part wants to go the other way. Now you can see. And by the way, that's where you're going to get to sexuality. That's what was what really the fight is going to be. Does my spiritual side win, or does my physical side win and don't forget God still wants us to be prove who he's not he's saying it's very important to have children but still we have to balance this out so and we have to understand why we're doing it so here we go so again he's creating us and then I want you to go to the uh, he puts them in the garden very nice but I want you to see what happens after that so go down to verse 
18. Okay, verse 18. Now he's in the garden all alone. As it were, he's been told to serve, uh, he, his job is to to work and to guard it. And then God says, this God of mercy, God of justice says, Lo tov heyod ha'adam levado. It's not good that man be alone. As lo ezek connecto. I am going to make him an, a helpmate opposite him. Well, either it's a helpmate or it's opposite him. Again, make up your mind. You can't have both. So the rabbis explain what was God saying? That one, it's not good for the person to be alone. An interesting thing, because if he's if man is alone and he has this ability to think and so on and so forth, he's higher than the animals. So people may think, or the animals or the creation may think, well, maybe this guy's a god too. Who knows? He's one. God is one. It makes sense. People like to make those sort of connections. If this is one and this one, then they must be the same. And the answer is no. That's number one reason. And then is a connecto, a helpmate opposite him is, if the guy merits it, notes, if he's doing what's proper, then his wife will be his helpmate. She'll encourage him. On the other hand, if he's doing wrong, the wife is, <laughs> slaps him. <laughs> what's right? So now you have to look at that. What is the woman in this case? Is the woman subservient to the man? No. No. Is she equal to the man? Or does that? Or is she better than the man? Depends on what you're talking about. Yeah. How? Different, different roles. They, they each have different responsibilities. Oh, that's true too. That's 100% true. But in this case, she's better than the man. Ah. God's making her better. Just help me. You want to help me opposite him. If he's doing good, pat him on the back. If he's doing wrong, slap him silly. <laughs> You're already the boss. The woman be, at this point becomes the boss because she has to keep the guy in, in uh, uh, hold the reins back on him. Because Now let's understand why, first of all. What's, what's the nature of man? The nature of man was, and God gave it to us, the chiv shuha, conquer it. We're the conquerors. We go out and we, we're, we're simple-minded. <laughs> Give us a spear and we'll go. Okay, give us a gun, we go, we get our stuff, and we come back and we, and we put it in front of the woman uh, in the old, uh, using very uh, old language here, and she prepares what she has to do. Fine. If, if he does wrong, then it's no good. The wife says, what are you doing here? You can't do that. You, you can't act inappropriate. So now, but the, again, the guy's going out there. That's why, for, by the way, a man is obligated to have children. A woman, of course, is not obligated to have children, only the man. Obviously, we need the woman to do it. Okay? <laughs> no question about that. But the woman is not the conqueror. She's not killing people. We, on the other hand, are killing people. We're killing things. We're conquering. So as a result, just as we took, take people out, we have to bring people back in. So that's why really we have this obligation of procreation. On the other hand, the woman doesn't because she's not out there killing people. Women, uh, that's not their nature. It's just not. You know, how many times you see, until recently, you never saw a woman boxer. Now I see women boxers all around. I see them on the internet. I'm thinking, why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. Okay, but for, the, for many years, you never heard of that. And if that's women's live where they want to go, good luck to them. But uh, it's not something I really would want to pay to see. I, I don't know why people want to see certain things. But okay, that's what it is. So, but that's what's going on here, where God is say, uh, forming her, and I want you to be a helpmate opposite her. And then what happens is, uh, uh, so then what happens? He said, God create, makes this announcement. And look what he does. Vayitzer Hashem Elokim Adama. So God becomes the matchmaker, as it were, and He brings forth from the ground Kol Chayda Sada, the Kola of Shemaim, all of the animals of the field and all of the birds of the sky. Adam, and He brought them to man. They're all Mayikalot to see what we call them. 
And anything that he would call him would be the name. Wait a second. God, am I missing something? You said you're going to bring a helpmate to this guy. And what do you do? You bring the animal kingdom. Unless he's a guy who, I forget his name, from the, the animal kingdom. Dr. Doolittle. No, it wasn't Doolittle. It was Marlon Perkins. Unless you're Marlon Perkins, you're really not going to appreciate this. So what do you bring? And on top of that, why are you trying to give the name? So from here, the rabbis say a view of a beautiful thing. The man, Adam, if you will, saw the spiritual essence of the animal, and from there he understood what the name, the nomenclature of that animal would be. For instance, a camel is called Gamal, and Gamal uh, in Hebrew, Gamal. So Gamal means uh, uh, giving kindness. What's the kindness? The hill, he can carry you for a, year, a long time. The camel, because he has uh, a lot of milk, uh, a lot of water, so he can go for a long time. So it's Gemil Chasadim. So that sort of thing. Uh, you have all these animals that are named, If you, by the way, names are very important. It's not something that we just can throw around. Uh, when I name my child, it says in the Talmud that I had Ruach HaKodesh, I had uh, the Holy Spirit, if you will, that I was imbued with the prophecy, that's why I was on prophecy, that I named my kid appropriately to what my child would be in the future. Whatever our name is, that's what our future was going to, uh, was going to be. We can either fight it or not, but really that's what it is. So a person is Chayim. It means a person is going to give life. He's going to inspire people, whatever the case is going to be. Okay, and so that's really what's going, and so that's what's happening. So he saw the animals and he named everything. And the problem was, of course, he couldn't find Lomatsa Ezek Konegdo. He couldn't find his Ezer. He couldn't find his Bishir. He couldn't find his faded one. So here, the rabbis again, uh, in this book that we're going through, he uses this to an extreme. And he says like this, what happens? We all go on dates. And sometimes we don't find the right person. We're looking for all the wrong places. Because the basic thing is we don't know what we need. We have a list. And our list is, because of secular society and the Hollywood, it's true. Our, our whole look at love is false. We think we fall in love. We don't fall in love. We fall in lust. Bottom line. There's no thing as love is a learned response. I'm with a person, I grow with them, and I learn to love. I learn things about them, and as a result, I learn to love them. It's not. It's a joke to think I'm going to fall in love. It's as one rabbi said, falling in love. What's that like? Falling in a pit. <laughs> and how do you fall out of love? Do you fall out of the pit? Well, how does that work? What happens is again, I fall in lust, and I'll give you a proof of this from the. From the Torah itself, you have Tamar and uh, David's son. I forget his name already. But the David's son, o Onan? Oh, no, that's the wrong word. Okay, I forget. Am Amnon. I think it was Amnon. Yeah, Amnon and Tamar. So Amnon, David's uh, son, King David's child, he's, he saw his half sister and he loved her. It says he loved her. He was growing sick of love. He was lovesick over her and his. And he's dying, as it were, and his partner, his friend, says to him, why, what, why are you so sick? Oh, I love Tamar, I just want her to be with me, blah, blah, blah. And they come up with a ruse. He rapes Tamar. And then was the very, very next line, after he had her, he hated her. Mm. There's no love. It's all lust. And that's what the Torah is saying. When it came to knowing the animal and knowing what's going on, Adam knew what he needed. He had a clear picture, as it were, or he was developing his picture, if nothing else. And so he was seeing what's going on here. I, these, pe these animals, they're not going to complete me. They're not what I'm looking for. It's not, I'm just not looking for looks. There's a cute country song where it says, yeah. and my son was listening, and it says the, that the girl was a perfect storm. And he said, what does that mean? I, I feel like I should have turned off the radio at that point, but <laughs> I said, what a perfect storm means is this guy thinks 
that he found somebody that's perfect. It's exactly what he would have ordered from the Sears catalog. <laughs> blah, and blah, blah, whatever he wants. And this, he's going crazy over her. And I said, but you don't understand. And I told my son. And I used that as an example of uh, Amnon and Tamar. I said, he's only looking for physicality. He's not looking for something that's going to be forever, namely the personality. What, does, what do I want from my marriage? Do I want children? Do I, uh, what kind of house do I want to build? How am I going to practice my religion? That's the important stuff. We all go on dates. And what do people do on dates? They go to movies. They go to... Uh, they don't talk. They just don't talk. They think they're in love because they like, it. they like how each other looks. And that's all they care about. And in the secular world, we know, we know it has to happen by the first or second date. And if it doesn't happen, it can't be a good date. But in, this, in the religious world, that doesn't happen until marriage. You have to actually, uh, you're talking. You're talking for 10, 15 hours, 20 hours, 3 hours, wherever you're together, you're talking. <coughs> and you, of course, you've checked things out. You don't, when you go on a date like that, it's because you know, the, you, people know of the person you've been basically set up. doesn't mean you have to marry the person. I have to like who I'm looking at too. But uh, we already know we have a lot of things in common. So now it's just a matter of can we really get along? And that's the discussions you're having. It's a discussion of what I want from life. And that's why the Jewish divorce rate amongst the Orthodox is extremely low. It's still only, I think, 3 to 5 percent, as compared to the secular world, which is 50 to 60 percent, if, if not higher at this point. So we have a whole different thing going on, but because of where we're coming from, because we understand that marriage is not a dating game where I want to go out and and do what I want to do. I'm not an animal. I'm in the image of God. And I have to act that way. Okay, so now what happens? So God says, when he, he realize, when Adam finally realizes, I don't I can't find anybody, verse twenty one. So God caused his great uh, a, a sleep, a strong sleep to come on uh, Adam, on the man, and he slept. And he took one of his, and Victor wanted to say, ribs. If you count your ribs, men and women have the same amount of ribs. It's not, it doesn't mean ribs. It means, according to just simple Hebrew, his side. Remember, man was originally one creature. God splits up the, the human. And now we have two humans from that one. And what he does is he closes the flesh under it. So now God builds. God becomes a builder. God builds the side. That he took from the man to be a woman. And he brought it to the man. When it says, and this is again, the Torah is telling us a beautiful thing about women. That women have bina. Women were made with understanding. My, if you, uh, when you look at a, my wife always says to the kids, <laughs> "You better hope I never die because your father doesn't have TLC." <laughs> I said, "I do. Too little caring. It's no problem for me." But it's it's something true that a woman instinctively has this understanding of what's going on. A man has to be brought along. We just. We're logical, yeah, we have this, this ability to, uh, you know, analyze something to the nth degree. But women, because they don't think like we do, they think in grandiose terms and all around the place, and we guess what, we can never follow them. It's an impossibility for man to talk to a woman and understand what's going on. Am I wrong? You are correct. Correct, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying anything new. Men and women do not know how to communicate. If you go, the famous thing is you come home and you see your wife's upset and you say, honey, what's wrong? She said, nothing. And of course the man has nothing. Thank you. Good. And, goes away and, she's, and the woman's going to kill you because you didn't understand. Okay? And it's a famous, it, 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 all these are jokes, but they're, they're true. We see it every time. And what's worse is when you say, no, really, what's going on? She says, well, if you don't know, <laughs> yeah, just shoot yourself at that point. That's, yeah, get over it. Yeah. What do you say to, 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 to critics, uh, uh, I guess, on the feminist side that say, we're all the same, we're all, you know, it's just, it's, it's learned responses. And, uh, what, do you, what do you say to that? I say the Torah doesn't agree with you. Uh -huh. 
But more than that, it's just not logical to say we're the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, just physically, for one second, mm-hmm. if I'm, if, get a woman my size, my size, start out this, with the same thing. I go to the weight room with her. We both go to the weight room. We both work out the same way. My muscle mass will grow faster than her muscle mass. I'll be bigger and stronger than her. Mm-hmm. Again, same, I'm not talking about a, a uh, a uh, person who's on, uh, what do you call it, the steroids. <laughs> Not all steroids, straight working out. I'm going to build up faster and be stronger than her, no matter what she does. So that's one thing. On top of that, my sister is a great, I'm just picking on my sister because she's an artist. My sister is an artist, I stink. Okay, we're not equal. We're just not equal. Now I'm not saying because she's a woman, she's an artist. If I would have an artist or, or Einstein, Einstein versus me, I'm not in his level. Does that mean, so what? We all, have, and in Judaism, we don't look at equality like that because there's no such thing as equality. We Remember, we don't have rights. We have obligations. God gave us obligations. My obligation was to conquer. My wife's, uh, the woman's obligation is to nurture, not to kill, not to conquer. She's doing that from behind the scenes. <laughs> what do they say? That uh, for, uh, behind every good woman, uh, every good man is a great woman. Right? That's the expression? Something like that. Something like that. So you have that sort of thing where we, where I think people are foolish. They want to always say they're equal. I agree with equal work for equal pay, just to get that out of the way. But it's not to say that we're equal. We're not equal. We're different. That's just the nature of the beast. And, I, and that's what I would say to people. I think you're they're, they're deluding themselves to believe other than that. I'm not saying they can't achieve. God forbid, they can achieve. Well, they can actually complement each other. If the woman well, that's does the point. what she's good at, the man does what he's good Correct. at. They work together. Correct. The that's what's supposed that's to be. That's why aids are connected. Though. Again, help mate opposite him. Right. If I'm doing what I should be doing, we're going to work together. We have a unit. Otherwise, hit me over that. I mean, with it, get it over with. So, like I said, but here, so we live from the Torah. Again, you're looking at the, the Shorosh, the root of Vayivan. He built, you have Bina from there. You can get Bina, understanding. So God gave her understanding. So again, a woman has the ability to see things that we necessarily won't, that we don't necessarily see right away. She does. Now, when Adam saw her, this is what it says, Vayomah Adam, so the man said, Zotapan, this time, Etsem atzamai is the bone of my bone, uvasa midisari, and the flesh of my flesh, the zoti isha, to this, to this creation, to this animal, if you will, I will call her woman. Uh, because she was taken from the man, this, this creature. So what's going on? He recognized right away that the spiritual, her spiritual side was equal to his spirituality. And he understood what the nature was. He understood that this is perfect. This is what we want. So when he did that, when he understood that, this is who he took. So then the Torah says, al of Ish, that's why a man will, uh, will abandon at Aviv, at Imo, his father and his mother, the Davak be Ishto, and he'll attach himself to his wife, Vayu the Basrechad, and they will be one person, one flesh. What does that mean? You'll have children. But what it also means is you'll leave your parents <coughs> when you find the right person. You don't want to be with your parents. It's not because your wife is telling you, you got to leave mommy's house. It's just common sense. You, you don't want to be there anymore. You've come to your next stage in life. So what you're learning from the Torah here is something very important. When it comes to sexuality, again, we have to be very, under, we have to be very careful with how we're, we're looking at life. I can look at it as an animal and just fulfill my desires but then i'm not looking for anything and i'm going to end up going whatever i want to do it could be with a woman it could be with a man that's it could be anything because i'm trying i'm searching for something i'm searching to be for to feel complete but i don't know what i'm looking for i've never examined that it could be for the animals for that matter i i've never examined it but once i understand that i'm created by hashem and i have a mission to be like hashem then I say, oh, so now I have a, a litmus test. I have to look at who this person is and can we get, spiritually get along? 
And suddenly I have a whole new look at, a whole new view of what I'm looking for. Again, I'm looking for a person who's going to agree with me. Uh, we're going to bring up Jewish children in a, in a home that's, in, uh, that's surrounded by Torah. So I know what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anything out there. Now I'm looking for a very specific thing. And I'm not necessarily looking for beauty, because what is beauty? Beauty is skin deep. It's to here today, gone tomorrow. Let's face it. We all like to believe that we're going to look like this when we're uh, 100 years old. <coughs> Maybe we will. T today, you never know. We have so much preservatives, we may actually do this. We could pull it off. But again, you know, the, the most beautiful woman or the most handsome man, if they don't have a personality, if, they don't get, if they're not able to get along, it doesn't work. And more than that, in Jewish, in Jewish law, we have something called nida, which is the menstrual cycle. When a woman has, uh, when she goes into the menstrual <coughs> cycle, so the man is not allowed to be with his wife in a physical <coughs> manner, not even to kiss her, not even to pass salt, and so on and so forth. At that point of our marriage, we go back to the dating part where we only talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, you don't touch. For two weeks, basically, you're not touching. Two weeks, you're on, two weeks, you're off, basically, okay? So now what happens, during that time, I'm not touching my wife. My wife's not touching me. We're not, we're not exchanging those glances. We're just talking. And we're, uh, hopefully we've been talking the other two weeks too. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't talk the other two weeks. But here we're forced into that situation where we are going back to that. And why does Hashem demand that from us? Because we have to recognize that it, she's not my play toy. That that's a person too. Well, again, my spirituality has to take over. My carnal takes over some part for that for that moment of the when when we can actually engage as, in marital relations. So then the carnal, along with my spiritual, has to be there. But once it goes into when she's in that uh, during that, that time of the month. So then we have to separate and I have to relate to her in a whole different manner, which again is why Jewish marriage works better, Orthodox marriage works better than secular marriage. Because <coughs> for two weeks, or actually for the whole time I'm training myself to have to talk with this person and treat this person like a person and not like a se sexual object. It's a very important thing. I'm not running away, I'm not doing anything, I'm having to talk with you. And I'm having to treat you, and I have to remember the, who, I, why I married you. Again, that's something that's really very strong. And then, of course, when you get back together again, after the, uh, when the woman goes to the mikvah, so then it's like honeymoon again. Mm. You're renewing that, that, that excitement you had. So it never dies. It's an amazing system. People... And I said this before about Shabbos, I said before about many things. If you don't do it, you'll never get it. If you try it, if you do it, then you realize, wow, these, the, Hashem knew what He was doing. Really? It's, it's all Hashem. Hashem knew what He was doing. He knew how to keep the excitement alive. And by the way, if you go to all these modern books of how to keep your marriage alive, they tell you basically to do that. Separate. Don't get don't, uh, separate for a little while, because separation makes you the heart grow fonder. Blah 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 blah. But think they want you to separate whatever they want you to do, but we don't allow any touching. It's like when I went to fast. It's interesting in Jewish fasting, when we have to fast on our fast days, we're not allowed to have any water or any food or drink. So when I had to get a blood test, they told me I have to fast for 12 hours. I said okay, and they said. But if you want, you can have coffee, tea, or water. And I said, what? I thought he said fast. Yeah, yeah, but you can drink. We wouldn't expect anything less. And I said, oh, I wish, I wish God would listen to you guys. Because he's just fast in the history. But that's what's going on. So when we have to separate again, we have to separate totally. And that's all to control our... We want to make sure that the carnal doesn't take over on the spiritual. Balance. Sorry? Balance. Yeah, we have to have a balance, but more, we want to balance the, the spiritual to really be stronger. 
So we want to maintain that because that is who we are. That's what God wanted from us. Again, we have to rule the world, but we have to do it in a, in a good manner. We can't just do what we want. We can't just destroy to destroy. We have to we have to destroy sometimes to build. You said benevolent and benevolent. We have to put those two things together. And we have to know what we're doing. Sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind. No question about that. And, and yes, all these songs, these songs just come in, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's what sexuality is teaching. That's what the Torah is teaching us through the guy, uh, through the model of Adam and Chava. You never thought you would, from a, a creation story that you'd get how to live. But really, that's what God's teaching us. What we have to do and how... Again, God created us in, in His image as a world with the ability to think and understand and not to get caught up in our instincts. Our instincts are to do what we do. But when, God, when, we, when we use our intelligence, we understand what we're doing to that person, then we try to understand that, which is why, again, I won't go to the Torah for it, but when it's, going, when it's talking about sexual relations, it says, Ve'yeda Adam et Ishto, and the man knew his wife. Why are you speaking so euphemistically? And through, through this, the Torah is not speaking euphemistically. It's speaking the, the right way. It's, God's telling us, when you, have, when you get married, when you're going to have relations with this person, you have to know <coughs> them. You have to understand them. When, if they are in pain, you are in pain. There's a famous uh, story of the rabbi who went, uh, I think it was uh, Rabbi Ari Levin, I believe it was, <coughs> who went with his, uh, to the doctor with his wife, and he said to the doctor, our toe hurts us. Mm -hmm. He felt his pain, his, his wife's pain. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel your spouse's pain, then you're just two people passing in the, in the, in, in the uh, whatever the, the expression is, two people passing, on, uh, uh, two ships passing in the sea. But if I feel your pain, if I feel your joy, if I, feel, if I get to know you, that's the important part. And again, if I don't do that, then we're heading to divorce. Then we're heading for just being animals. We want to raise ourselves above animals. And that's, again, with the Torah, with all, again, only in creation, first two books, uh, first two chapters, you get all of this, this model for life, and so model that the more we explore and the more we understand the, and the more we get into it, the, the, the more we understand what Hashem wanted from us and how beautiful a marriage and our lives can be together. It's not just sex. It's a whole, whole thing that's going on there, a whole understanding of what, what's, what our role in the world is. And once we forget that, that's when we get on to all the other problems that we have in the world. Maybe, uh, I'll just leave it to your imagination. All the other problems that, uh, uh, that we have is coming from a lack of our understanding of what we should be doing. And with that, I want to say thank you everybody for coming. Uh, next, next Sunday, uh, next, yeah, next Sunday, we're going to have a class on this pursuit of happiness. <laughs> and that's going to be at 6 o'clock right here in, uh, in that room actually over there. Also, starting tomorrow, for those who enjoyed this class, we're going to have another class that's going to go very deep into all these uh, subjects, and it's called the, uh, the Way of God. It starts tomorrow at 7. I'm going to give everybody who would like a, 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 a sheet which tells you the book that we'll be using. The book is on you. I, th that we can't give. Uh, and also, I've been asked to give you this. This is our fundraiser. That uh, has a free flash drive, and again, we're asking if you haven't received it already, to uh, and you like to, if you like what we're doing, please donate generously to the Midwest Torah Center. Thank you so much again for joining us, especially on this cold night. Thank you. <laughs>